So, what do you all think of our new ship, huh? How's she holding up? All systems check. Everything's perfect. Looks like you did another excellent job. Thanks, Tron. I'm always impressed at how you're able to build such neat toys. It's not that big of a deal, Teasel. I mean, you were able to get us the best kind of equipment, which let us finish the job a lot faster than it would have taken. I know we spent a lot of money on this ship, which means we're going to have to work hard to get it back. That's why I've got something really big planned for us this time. We're going to take the legendary treasure of the Nakai Desert, Diana's Tear! What? But that's supposed to be one of the biggest refractors in the world! How did you find it? It wasn't easy. I had to spend a lot to get that information. That old junk dealer drove a hard bargain. Anyway, all right, people, you know the plan. I'm going to take shift B in. Man your stations, everyone. We're rolling out. Roger. Huh? Shift B? What about me, Diesel? Tron, you stay here with the guest shaft. You've done enough work already. Can't have you take care of everything, you know? But... but Diesel! Don't you worry about a thing. We'll be back before you know it. You just sit back and relax, okay? All right, boys! Ready? Let's go get that treasure! of Tron Bond! Good God, after Legends 2, that's such a shorter intro scene. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Play The Misadventures of Tron Bond, and thank you so much for 250 subscribers. I say realizing this is late because we're getting closer to 260 at this point, but oh, hey, who cares? Let's get on into a new game, shall we? Control-wise, you actually have choices from the start. I'm going to be going with essentially classic Mega Man Legends style controls with R1 for turning and L2 for aiming. Don't ever use auto-aim, I'll get into why in a few moments. supposed to be a legendary treasure. It's not going to be found that easily. I'll get that junk store owner if it's the last thing I ever do. Where the heck are those ruins anyway? I've been looking for hours. <clears throat> This is the Gustav Bonbon. Can you hear me? Over. Mm, there's nothing here but sand. Have you found anything? Over. Ba-boo! 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 What? A giant doorway? That's it! That has to be the entrance we're looking for! I knew you could do it, Bon Bon. Now we're in business. What's your heading? North? All right. Stand by, I'm on my way. All right, boys, let's go! Yay! Whoa! Mission start! 
not the most front-loaded a Mega Man Legends game is with cutscenes. Because, yes, this is a spin-off to Legends. Hmm. Which way is it? Let's see. Tron said to use the L1 and R1 buttons to look around. In specific, as anyone who has watched or played Legends 1 would realize, this is a prequel to Legends 1 because the Geshel Shaft isn't exploded. Because, uh, we gotta blew that shit up. Whoa! It's a Reaverbot. One of the robots that guard the old ruin. Looks like we'll have to fight our way through. That means using the square button to fire. If I press the L2 button, the Gustav's weapons will auto-lock onto the target. Don't ever use auto-aim, the one that I didn't select back on the start menu, because there's points later on in the game where it would target things you don't want to destroy, so just using manual aim will just save you some headache for later game stuff, really. Hmm. There's a little hole there. I bet the serve bots could fit inside. Hey, Tron. You said you made a command system for the serve bots. How do I use it? the R2 button, Teasel. If you hold the R2 button down, you'll see a target appear. Use the directional button to move the target to where you want the third box to go. And press the fire button. That will launch a beacon bomb, which will tell them where to go. Got it. <laughs> All right. Let's give it a try. As they just said, the ever-lovable servbots aren't just series mascots this time around. The servbots are an active participant in basically every stage of the game. By holding Alt, 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 R2, you can activate your beacon bomb and shoot it into various crevices for them to go get some treasure. I recommend shooting into each crevice at least twice, though, as there's usually six items in there. But the servbots' AI for movement is Pikmin tier in how easily it can get lost. Therefore, you might just want to shoot it in twice to make sure you got everything, in case one didn't sneak in there or something. By pressing the triangle button next to certain things, you can pick them up, and this is your best weapon in the game, as not only can you destroy certain cracked walls with this, but throwing items at enemies is the most damaging thing in the game, at least for the early portion. It'll make certain bosses easier, it'll take out certain bigger enemies, usually in one to two shots, it's ridiculously powerful. And now the game is going to give me that tutorial in about five seconds because I did it a bit early. Also, control-wise, the Gustav here is essentially just a slower and lunkier Mega Man from Legends 1 and 2. There's not really many differences beyond that. Though, it makes me wonder why the Gustav wasn't in Legends 1 if it's here before Legends 1. I guess Tron just didn't feel like pulling it out. And you really want to get the refractors in that particular cave with the serve bots, because those red refractors are the best in the game, and from that I got 30,000 zenny, which is a lot. Hmm? There's some rocks blocking the road. What was it Tron said? Ah, oh, that's right. Use the triangle button to pick things up. Gotta say, it's also a little weird hearing Teasel's voice actor not scream. <laughs> because he's a big fan of that in Legends 1 and 2. Mind you, if we ever get Legends 3, I doubt we'll ever hear this voice actor again due to, uh, <clears throat> reasons. Now, this tutorial stage is really good, and one thing the game doesn't exactly teach you, but you can figure out really quickly here, you can also use your beacon bomb whenever you're holding on to something. And this is very good, as there are times you might just want to carry an item for, for an enemy that's coming up, and there's also a beacon bomb thing right next to you, so this will just save you some time. And for the power of throwing... Yeet! That thing takes about three or four, maybe even five buster volleys to take out otherwise, so that's that's the power of throwing. Also, the Gustav does have Mega Man's quick turnaround right out of Resident Evil 3 by pressing backwards in circle, so use that to your advantage. Must be it! Ahem. This 
is the Gusta. Come in, Gesselschaft. Gesselschaft here. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm in front of the sub gate. I'm going to go in. Tell Tron not to worry. Over. Diesel, is everything okay? How's the Gusta holding up? That you, Tron? <laughs> Everything's fine. The Gustav's doing great. How could it not, after all? You made it. Don't worry about a thing. We'll be home with the treasure before you... Huh? What's that? Bon Bon can't get a break, can he? Huh? You! What? What's going on, Tizo? Tizo! You're a hard man to find, Tizo Bon. Don't you recognize me? I'm hurt. It's me, Glide. I work for Mr. Globe, remember? I'm sure you know why I've come all this way to find you. Don't you do it. Wait! I can get the money I borrowed from Lo back real soon! Once this job's over, I'll have your money, honest! I'm afraid it's too late. The deadline is long past. Give it back. All of it. Now. Time to pay the piper! Listen, if you just wait a few more. Silence. Don't you understand? Your time is up. You leave me no choice but to exercise our option. That big body of yours is mine now. Come along. What's going on, Tiza? What's happening? <clears throat> I've run into a little trouble. Don't worry, though. I'll be back soon. You're not exactly my type, but if you want to play around a little, I'm here. Take your best shot. Intro boss is very weak. Just do the classic Mega Man Legend Circle strafing trick. You'll do this no problem. He has a laser tech. You'll spit out in three directions. He can also fly up into the air and do air raid passes where he'll just shoot his machine gun at you. And I believe he has a third attack that's just a giant charge laser. But he seldom gets a chance to do anything, really. Not bad. I'd expect no less from the leader of the Bond family. But not quite good enough. Ultimate Glide Laser! Yeah. Ah! Miss Tron, we've lost contact with the Gustav. I wonder if Teasel's all right. He said he'd run into some trouble. It's no use standing around here worrying. I'm gonna go to their last known position and make sure everything's okay. Block D, can you hear me? We're heading out in a truck to look for the goo staff. The rest of you, wait at your normal stations, okay? Roger, Roger. yes ma'am! Yay, we're going on a mission. Tell me what happened to 
Teasel and Bon Bon? They were beaten up! They were both taken away! Taken away? But by who? Why? Loathsmen! They said if we can't pay back our debt, they'll make us work it off! Debt? Teasel never said anything about a debt. He must not have wanted to worry us and so didn't tell us about it. That's just like him. Well, let's get back to the Gessel Shaft. We have to make a plan to rescue them. Let's go! Roger! What could be taking them? It shouldn't take this long to find something like that. Huh? Miss Tron, we found it! We, we found, found it! it. What took you so long? Hurry, give it to me! Yep, this is it. This is Teasel's receipt for the money. What does it say? Read it, Miss Tron. Let's see. I owe you. I, Teasel Bond, do hereby state that I owe Loath Inc. the sum of one million zenny to be paid back in full. Huh? Whoa! One million zenny? What was Teasel doing with so much money? Wait a minute. The date on this I owe you. It's from around the time we were building the Gessel Shaft. Teasel said not to worry about money. He said we had plenty, and then he went out and bought everything. Miss Tron, should we make dinner for Master Teasel and Master Bon Bon tonight? No, not tonight. But keep their places ready. They'll be back. I'm going to pay this IOU and bring Teasel and Bon Bon back. Yes, ma'am! And thus the game begins proper. Between missions in this game, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the Gessel Shaft as sort of a hub world of sorts. There's multiple rooms you can go around in, but the make or break for this game is going to be you talking with the serve bots. They're how you learn the information about the game, learn who might need what item from a side quest, who might they might give you a certain item for a side quest to give to another serve bot, and even how you upgrade your serve bots to make them more effective in battle. Uh, I'll go each of, um, over more of those mechanics in detail as we go, but there's going to be a lot of talking in each part just because you're going to be talking to them a lot. Miss Tron, if you want to save the game, you can do it here. It's probably a good idea to save every once in a while, don't you think? And that is true. You can only save here in the HQ. It's also the only place you can go into the main missions. Well, let me tell you, number 40. All right, I'll tell you. You'll be the first to know. Yay! The Gessel Shaft is equipped with everything we need to get ready for missions. For example, it can be used to develop new Gustav parts. Most importantly, it can be used to train you serve bots. If you train, you can take a more active part in missions, develop special skills, and learn how to do all sorts of things. Still, all 40 of you don't have to train, you can train individually. Surf bots with combat skills can train and help with missions. Or the surf bots with science skills can train to improve the Gustav. Some surf bots have, well, let's say unique skills, and the only way to learn about them is to talk to every surf bot and get to know them. It's also important to inspect the ship regularly by talking with surf bots frequently. You can learn what they're up to in each room and find out all sorts of things. Talking with all the serve bots will help you when you don't know what to do next. Got it? Got it. Also notable, you can also rename each individual serve bot. Uh, in the case that the numbers isn't going to do it to you, you can be like, alright, maybe Gerald needs this item for this part of the side quest. Though you wouldn't be able to name it Gerald, you maybe be able to name it Gerald. Because each of the serve bots only has a four character name limit. And the way you do that is there's technically a sub-menu when you're in the talk menu, like I am right now. You can press circle on any given serve bot for a number of items to show up, such as their data, where they are on the list, give them an item, or even rename them. I'm going to be keeping the numbers, as for my notes sake, it's a lot easier to type number one, rather than Carol. And that particular serve bot brings up another interesting mechanic. There is a scouting subsection of the HQ where you can send upwards of three serve bots at a time to grab an item at the end of the next mission. 
Now, this is never mandatory. Uh, it's essentially a side income, if anything, because it'll give you items you can sell through the appraisal shop, which I'll go over in a few moments. But I do, in particular, want to send a serve bot to one particular area right now. I want to send a serve bot, I think I said number 40, to C4. As from that, at the end of the next mission, we're going to get a particular item called a shell, which is going to be useful for getting the special ability of a particular serve bot. After this, I, you basically never need to scout again, but I will be sending more serve bots out to various sections of the island. Essentially at random, really. It doesn't matter who I'm going to send where. I'm just going to be sending them out to get extra items. That's HQ for now, though. Let's head on over to the next area, which I believe I go to the lab. The lab is sort of the R&D room out of Legends 1 and 2 for this game. It's where you can develop new parts for the goose stuff to make it stronger. But you can't do that off the bat because you need to fulfill a few other requirements first. Let's talk to the main serve bot here to get the biggest idea, though. Miss Tron, I'm working on making a weapon with a high rate of fire, a Gatling gun. Leave it to me, I'll give you the best Gatling gun ever. Miss Tron, I'm working on making a new powerful weapon, the Bomb Bazooka. I'll try to finish it as soon as I can. Get used to serve bot voices, by the way. Hmm. You look like you're worried about something, number 34. Well, Miss Tron, I'm trying to think of ways to improve the Gustav's armor. Do you think you could take me on a mission with you sometime? Hmm, that might not be a bad idea. After all, Surfbots who find items on missions do get smarter. Sounds like just what I need. That gets into the big reason you actually can't develop anything here yet. In order to develop certain parts, that particular serve bot needs to have a maxed out brains meter, as each particular serve bot has four stats. Attack, speed, brains, and sloth. Sloth we won't be able to do with anything with this part, so I'll talk more about that when it becomes relevant. But the other three we can talk about. Attack and speed influence their behavior in the field whenever you use a beacon bomb. And for the particular subsets of serve bots known as snipers, attack also influences your Gustav's strength. Brain influences, I believe, entirely their unique skill set, as well as maybe a bit of their behavior in the field. I'm actually not entirely certain about that former part. I do realize for a fact, though, that anytime you max out a surf bot's brains, they usually give you some secondary benefit. Either it's unlocking their unique skill, or otherwise. Unique skills can also be unlocked, as I believe someone mentioned back in the HQ, by giving them a certain item, like that strategic notes we have will give someone their unique skill. I'll be doing that in a moment. But for right now, you can't really do much here in part selection in the R&D place. You can get some energy bottles, which will restore your health, but I have no use for that. For now, let's head to storage. This is sort of the shop, sort of not. I may not be able to appraise things like number 14 can right now, but someday I will. I'm gonna work and study real hard. That way I can help you even more, Miss Tron. Number four, what are you doing? This isn't your assigned area. Miss Tron, I was trying to get the cafe to the cafeteria and I got lost. Ah. The cafeteria isn't this way. It's over there. Thank you, Miss Tron. Miss Tron, if you find any items you don't know what to do with, bring them here. We'll appraise them for you. We can tell you what they do and how much they're worth. We can also sell items for you. Indeed, the appraise menu here is how you get extra money in between missions from items you pick up along the way. There are certain items you can't sell, like you can't sell the gun for the Gustav, of course. Key items like the strategy notes you can't sell because they're supposed to be given to a serve bot. But any individual item that you get that has its own cost, you can sell it for each individual pieces of its worth. The appraisal bot will also have a secondary purpose when we max out its brain, so that's actually a priority one thing. The cafeteria doesn't have much purpose, especially right now. It's just another place to talk to more serve bots. Because serve bots, despite being robots, need to eat. I mean, I guess it's better to have them have stomachs that refill their energy rather than having to get a new set of batteries to put in their head maybe every six months. But still, food budgeting has got to be ridiculous on the Gessel shaft. <laughs> Number five, what are you doing? Why aren't you at your post? I don't know, Miss Tron. Lately, I just feel so tired. I don't want to work. Maybe I need a vacation. Can I take the day off? No, you're just being lazy. No more goofing off. Get back to work. Yes, Miss Tron. I do like that each of the individual serve bots has their own little quirky little personality bits, and you can actually learn a bit more about them by going into the individual menus that have them all listed. I won't be going over that because I have other things to do. 
The meeting room, this is actually technically where you start missions, even though you need to access missions through the HQ. Again, though, for right now, this is sort of a tutorial area. Uh, particularly thanks to number 37, who I'll be talking to in a moment. I'd rather be drawing pictures. I really wish I could draw some pictures. Number 35, what do you think you're doing? Miss Tron, do you have a pen or something I could borrow to draw with? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Everyone's working hard. Why aren't you? Yikes. Oh, the face. Still, he is a pretty good artist, isn't he? Ah, Miss Tron, I'm currently engaged in a study of tactics and strategy. I'm sure it'll be of great use to you once it's finished. If only I had some better resources. Hmm, strategy? Well, it's a good thing we just got some strategy notes then. Well, number 37, think that'll help you? This, this is amazing. Wait, hold on a minute. I, I did it, it's finished. I can see it, I understand everything. It's all clear to me now. And now his special skills have been unlocked strategy. He's a tutorial menu that'll teach you more about the inner workings of the Gestral Shaft, tell you how things work a bit more precisely. It's useful for newcomers, uh, but for me, not really much use. And to access any given uh, serve bots ability, you need to talk to them again afterwards, assuming it's one that'll work in the Gessel Shaft. And that's the main reason I came to the meeting room, really, aside from talking to number 35 for that little hint for later. There are notably some rooms in the Gessel Shaft you can't access yet, as they're not being done constructed, and some of the rooms won't have their full purposes until later. But for now, let's head to easily the most important room beyond HQ, the gym. This is where you can raise the attack and speed stats of your serve bots. Miss Trine, are all of us the same? I mean, do we all have the same abilities? Of course not. Everyone's different. Some are faster, stronger, or smarter. Everyone's got their own abilities, so you should train according to your own needs. Yes, Miss Tron. Miss Tron, are you happy with our abilities as they are now? Um, uh, how do I put this lightly? Uh, you're all baby, but no. I thought so. That's why I've developed a training program to raise our attack ratings. Everyone can use it to get stronger. And I've made up what I call the Super Servot Power-Up Plan. This month's goal is to train Servots numbers 1 through 8. I've also found out something interesting. Please listen. Just like different flowers grow in the same field, each Servot has a different skill. For example, some first Servots' attacks ratings won't go very high no matter how much they train. That means their talents lie in a different area, and you need to figure out what that is. The true meaning of a of training is to allow everyone to reach their full potential. I'll be working on new training sessions, let me know if you have any ideas. That is a very important thing to note. Each Servot does have those four stats I mentioned earlier, attack, brain, sloth, and speed. But they're incremented into four increments, one through four. Some Servots will maybe have a max attack of two, others four, some one. Each Servot has their own potential that can be realized, and you need to figure out what that is, partially through the menu that you'll be selecting Servots in to bring into missions. For now, though, I do want to bring number one into the training game, as not only can I show off the training game, but I want to get his attack stat raised for the next mission. Training is three rounds of catching bombs and throwing it at signs representing characters. You do need to actively catch the bomb by pressing, I believe, triangle with the right timing. And you want to generally aim between two signs as that allow you to take out two at once. Not only because that'll allow you to get more points within a relatively strict timer, but the serve bot who's putting back up the signs is really slow, and that's just the best thing to do it for you. Every now and then, two other things will show up in this particular minigame. Also, bombs that touch explode and stun you. Don't let that happen. The front serve bot can throw curry at you, which will freeze the timer for maybe two to three seconds. But occasionally, instead of a normal sign, a bazooka sign will be put up in a the place of a normal sign. What that is, is a bazooka. If you hit it, you gain the ability to shoot through basically every sign in front of you. Uh, but it does have a relatively strict time limit. I want to say like five seconds-ish? Notable, to hit the back row, you do need to jump and throw, which is X, then uh, triangle or square. I forget the buttons when I'm not playing. To raise a singular attack stat one point, you need to do three rounds. However, if you fail a round, you don't need to worry because you're given the option to retry then and there. So it's more so just get better at it until you're good at it. My best advice for hitting these signs and learning the best placements is to use the markings on the floor. Particularly, if you want to get between the two signs on the right or the left, the most extreme on either side, 
stand just to that side of the line on the floor marking the tiles. That'll generally give you the right placement. And try to, as well, shoot right in front of wherever the serve bot who's going around putting the signs back up is, as that'll allow you to get a bit more efficient. But there are times where you're just moving too fast and the bombs are coming out too fast, meaning you're just not going to be good with the timing there. This does take some getting used to, but it is ultimately worth it. And I will be training serve bots as we go through, though any future training segments that are the same minigame again and again will be fast-forwarded as there's not much purpose to seeing this full speed more than once, is there? Especially in hour-long episodes. The timer does get... The timer doesn't actually get more strict as you go through. What does get more strict is the target points. I'd say the highest you can easily get in this minigame is maybe 50. Depending on how good you are at catching the bombs, how good you are at placing where the bombs are going relative to the back serve bot. It can be a trial to learn, but honestly, this is a relatively fun minigame. Which kind of describes most of the game, really, because of how the game's main missions are structured. We'll go over that in a few moments. As for why I'm using number one here in the training in particular, while you do bring a number of serve bots with you on any mission, any mission where the Gustav itself is directly in combat, its combat stats are directly tied to the sniper serve bot within it. Sniper is a particularly unique skill that a few serve bots have that allow them to be in the Gustav, and they'll directly influence the attack power of the Gustav itself. I believe they'll also minorly impact the speed of it, but don't quote me on that part. This is just me making sure that the Gustav is as strong as it can be for the next mission. Uh, well, technically the first mission. And bringing up what that one serve bot said in the gym earlier, we just maxed out number one speed because his particular speed attack st stat caps out at three. His potential isn't as high as some others. With that, though, we're about done taking a tour around the Gessel Shaft. Took maybe 15 minutes. And now it's time for us to go to the mission menu. This is where we learn about what missions we can take on. In a bit of a different thing compared to Legends 1 and 2, we actually have multiple stages we can take out at once, but each of these has a completely different genre. We got action stages on the right, which are robbing missions. We have puzzle missions on the bottom, RPG-like missions on the top, and then the fourth one, which is a bit different than all of them. And we're starting off with mission number one, because I'm going to try and go in number order for the most part. On the mission menu, you can get details about the mission itself, as well as changing your serve bots. This time, we're going after the bank in Gold City. We're not going to bother with any tricks. We're going to land right in front of the bank and bust in. All right, Miss Tron. We'll scout out the area for you. I'll tell you what to do with the beacon bombs. Your job is to break into the bank and get all the money inside. Yes, Miss Tron. Miss Tron, what robot are you going to use for this mission? For this mission... I'm just going to use the Gustav. I'll use the weapons on the Gustav to stop anyone who gets in our way. All right, let's go. Aye, aye, Miss Tron. The robot option just tells you more about the robot you're using for that mission, but the serve button menu is the big important one here, as it not only allows you to choose the sniper you're bringing in, but allows you to choose the six other serve buttons that are coming with you. And as I mentioned before, if I recall correctly, the gym only allows you to raise a serve bot's attack and speed stats. The brain's stat is a special one. It can only be raised by bringing serve bots with you onto missions. And in particular, I recommend bringing in numbers 14 and most of the serve bots from the R&D lab, just to make things a bit smoother moving forward. Number 14 is the appraisal bot, by the way. I'll go over why I'm bringing him along after the mission. There are technically other ways to raise Servbot stats that involve scouting, but I'll go over that later this part when we get that very item. Despite me messing around, let's not mess around any further and just go right into Mission 1. Tell them to 
to pick us up. Come in, Drug. We need a pickup over. Miss Tron, they say they'll be here in two to three minutes. Two to three minutes, huh? Well, maybe the trip won't be a total waste. Grab what you can. Miss Tron, I found some valuables at the animal hospital. Okay, good going. All right, listen up. We're not leaving until we get 50,000 zenny, okay? Roger. New plan. Use beacon bombs to target the buildings and have the servbots seal what's inside. Our goal, collect 50,000 zenny. The missions on the right are, I like to call them destruction missions. We are going around the town and just messing everything up, including the lives of the people who live here, to get as much money as possible. Once you get 50,000, the secondary portion of the mission begins. Make sure to beacon bomb every building so they can go inside and grab items, but I also recommend beacon bombing trees and other items as you can get items to sell in the appraisal shop from those such as apples. Also, destroy the hospital itself, because uh, we might get something for doing that. <laughs> What's that? Looks like a statue of someone. Whoever it is, we're taking it. Roger! Make sure to run into that statue, by the way, to collect it and get a decent Zenny boost. I love these missions just because they're so outwardly chaotic, though it makes it very apparent we are not the good guys here. We are stealing people's shit. Is it sad I could tell that was the Mega Man 8 boss select theme? This is These stages are especially though where I recommend sending the serve bots into each area twice in the case one of their AIs doesn't work right and doesn't actively go into the building. I just find these kinds of missions to be chaotic fun and the first one isn't anything too bad. I do recommend picking up every tree after you have them grade it for the apples just so you can use it as a weapon to then make the buildings easier to destroy. These poor people, though, they did not expect this today. I also recommend doing your best to try and multitask in these stages, sending serve bots after trees while you're destroying a building that you've already beacon bombed. Try to make things as efficient as you can along the way. Get surrounded! Throw down your weapon and come along quietly! Run! It's the police! The truck's still not here. Looks like we'll have to fight our way out! And now we have police trying to fight us. However, you can just chuck shit at them to wreck their days. You can also send the surf bots at the cop cars themselves to raid their tires and sirens to sell at the appraisal shop. The cops are technically the only damage threat here, but they're not much of one. I recommend actually picking up the cop cars and throwing them at other cop cars to take them out pretty easily. You can also just ignore All right, we've got what we came for. Everyone get ready to leave. Why did I have to sleep in? Today of all days. Why am I so bad in the morning? Mood. for a boss against Denise Marmalade in her cop car. I say her full name, as I don't think the game even ever tells us her first name. 
I recommend shooting her car off the bat, but then completely ignoring her once she's out of it. Because you need to actually damage her herself to end the boss fight. But while the boss fight is still going on, you can still raid any of the trees, any of the houses, or anything that you haven't done yet. She throws bombs every now and then, but that's about her only attack. You can also distract her for a bit longer in case you want to destroy a house without any interruption by just sending the serve bots after her herself. Although, one of the funniest things you can do in this game in my eyes, even though I don't think it's worth it because it ends the stage early, is... It's hard to do, but if you pick up her car with the triangle button while she's driving around in it, she'll be dropped out of it, and then you can just chuck her car at her. Which is hilarious. With that said, it's the first real boss outside of Glide and his robot at, during the tutorial stage, but it's not much to worry about. Also, yeah, uh, Glide technically premiered in this game, uh, despite us facing him already in Legends 2. Uh, this and Legends 2 came out the same year, so they used a lot of the same characters to kind of intertwine the storylines a little bit. But then Glide became more popular for doing absolutely nothing in the Battle Network series, so... Shrug. Alright, now that the area is completely raided, though, and I have destroyed the lives of at least... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, maybe 7 families, not counting all the pets that now I don't have a hospital. It's time to go after Denise, and oh, I love the angry faces on the surf bots. Huh? Under construction? Well, going this way wasn't part of the plan anyway. You are limited to where you can go in this stage, by the way. <laughs> At this point, though, once Denise is out of her car, she's not really much of a threat. She gets stunned very easily by any attack you do, really. Uh, also, my bullets are now green because number one's attack skill has been put up from two to three. And that's the stage. Mission clear. Mission clear! After every stage, we're brought to this results screen, which will show us the results from the mission. Any zinni we collected during the mission itself, items we got with the surf bots we can sell in the appraisal shop, any stat raises we got during that stage, anything we did is shown here. For instance, now we're going to get the unique skill for the R&D surf bots, meaning we can now technically get these new parts at the lab once we get enough zenny. We'll also see any items we got from scouting as well, and in particular, you're one gonna get the item from C4 called a shell which I believe I already mentioned earlier, which we're going to give to a certain serve bot later on to get their unique skill. And now we get to go around the Gessel Shaft again. This is the pattern that the game is going to have moving forward. For now, let's head to the storage area, as I want to not only show off the appraisal shop's main feature, but I also want to talk to number four. I woke with the sun, worked and had fun. Bedtime comes at night, sleep and turn out the light. Do you know what this is, Miss Tron? Uh, is it supposed to be a poem? I knew you'd know it's a poem. I like poems. Do you like them too, Miss Tron? Here, take this. You can use it to write your own poems. And we got a poetry book. Thank you, number four, but um, if I were you, I'd keep my day job. Know what I mean? Oh. Oh, rough. For now, though, let's talk to number 14. In particular, use the appraisal option, not the actual talking. As now that we've reached Brains Rank 4 with number 14 from bringing him into that mission... Not only will he show us the price for each individual unit of an item when we highlight it, but he'll also directly tell us if we give this to a particular serve bot, what it'll do. Uh, namely, if you didn't have Brains Rank 4 with him, he'd only tell you that if you gave this to a serve bot, uh, it would maybe unlock a unique skill. Now with Brains Rank 4, he'll tell us exactly which serve bot. So now we know if we give that shell to number 36, I think it was, we'll unlock a new ability for him. As you can see, though, we've gone from, I think, around 90,000 to around 120,000 just from selling those items in the appraisal shop. It's really good to get 
anything along the way by using beacon bombs. For now, let's head to the gym, though, because another serve bot has shown up here. This is number nine. Not very mighty looking. Miss Tron, look at what I found. What is it? Hey, this is the red head parts. When I was making number one, I tried using lots of different colors. I liked red, but we didn't have enough zany to use it for everyone. Good, I'd be embarrassed to have a red head. Really? I think it's great. I mean, it would make you stand out, right? Say, there's an idea. I could use this show to show everyone who my favorite serve bot is. What do you say, number nine? If you work hard enough, I can put it on you. I'd like to be your favorite, Miss Tron, but I still don't want to wear that. We'll see about that. Anyway, give it here, please. Here you are, Miss Tron. This goes into a mechanic known as a favorite serve bot. And a, a favorite serve bot has very specific benefits for Tron and that serve bot. But I'm just going to say right now, while you can give it to any serve bot you like, you can only give it to one, and I recommend giving it to number 10 when we eventually unlock him. For now, though, let's just talk to number 39, because he was born earlier. We can give him the poetry book. Uh, a serve bot's life is a hard one, but it's also one of fun. Rain, sun, no matter the weather, 40 serve bots all, all play and work together. This is it. This is what I needed. I can use poetry to express what I feel. And he gains a special skill, poetry. If you want to know about my brothers, ask me. I'm sure I can be of great service. I'm not really sure what just happened, but I'll be sure to talk to you. The poetry ability is a very interesting one in that it'll give you hints towards items that each specific serve bot is looking for to unlock their unique skill. Again, this is more useful for newcomers than for returning players like myself, but I do recommend it all the same as it makes you feel good inside. You helped out a little buddy. For now, though, let's choose my next scouting session, and from there, I believe we'll be heading out to the next mission. Now, I'm just sending out serve bots here at random to random areas. You might get items that you can give to other serve bots' unique skills, depending on who you send where. In fact, I believe I even get one. I believe I get the comic book from doing this with one of them. But again, this is just side income at this point. The big thing you're going to be getting money from in the game is the main missions themselves. For instance, mission one, you're always going to get at least 50,000 out of. It's just that through doing the side stuff I did in that mission, I got 70,000 plus whatever from the uh, items I sold as well. Moving forward in part two on, I'm going to be cutting to this specific point in the scouting process. Just so you can see what serve bots I sent where. You don't need to see all the rest of that moving forward. And let's also talk about the save system. It's a save system. It actually saves faster than Legends 1 or 2. But I imagine that has to do with the lack of 3D graphics on screen compared to Legends 1. But we also lose out on the dancing monkey. So we lost what was truly valuable. With that though, we're not heading back to the bank action stages now. We're actually heading after mission number 2. Which is the puzzle type of gameplay for the game. Technically speaking, there are only four missions in the game. These have various levels that increase in difficulty and reward. I'm just heading after them all in a circle, more or less. This time, we're going to Tech Harbor to bring back the freight containers there. How'll you do that, Miss Tron? The Gustav can't carry something that big. Good question, but we're not taking the Gustav. Instead, we're taking the Gustav tank. It can move things as big as those containers, no problem. Yay, that means we can get all the containers. Not quite. There's a lot of containers there, but we only want those with valuables inside. We can use the other ones as steps or bridges if necessary, or just move them aside. Roger, let's go, Miss Tron. Wait, there's something else important I have to tell you. Listen carefully, the Gustav tank can only lift containers so many times, and the number of steps it can take are limited too. That means we're going to have to use our heads this time. It's like a puzzle, see? Yes, Miss Tron. And a notable thing about these particular mission types, you can only bring along the one serve bot, and I'm going to be bringing along number two. Compared to action stages, it doesn't have to be someone with a sniper sub skill, thankfully. For this mission, we'll be using the Gustav tank. The tank is operated basically the same way as the Gustav, except it has no weapons. To lift or set down a container, press the triangle or square buttons. To jump, press the X button. Miss Tron will explain the other rules for this mission once we get to the harbor. Alright, so let's head on over there. Alright, let's get to work! We're going to load those containers using the Gustav tank I modified for this kind of work. Wondering what's in those containers? I'll tell you! Top quality beef! 
safe states. Let's see. There's four containers. Miss Tron! Miss Tron! Look! Crab! It's a container full of crab meat. What? In this season? All right, we'll add that to the list as well. Roger! Hmm, even the Gustav tank can't handle big containers like these. The Gustav tank can lift containers a maximum of eight times. I'll have to keep that in mind when I'm moving the other containers out of the way. I won't be able to carry them that far either. No more than ten steps. But I can carry these light wooden containers anywhere. These metal ones look too heavy to move at all. Though, if I turn in place after picking them up, at least I can get them out of the way. I guess if I have to, I can put some containers into the sea. I'm sure I'll figure it out somehow. So, did you get all that? Um... Not really. Weren't you listening? If we get stuck, we can start over by opening a menu with the Start button. And selecting Restart. So let's give it a try, okay? I'll tell the rules again if you forget. Just press the Start button for the menu and select Rules. Let's go! Yes, Miss Tron! Alright, the puzzle style gameplay is rather self-explanatory. As Tron just said, we want to pick up the crates and bring them to the ship, but we only have a select amount of steps after picking up a crate to do that, and we can only pick up crates so many times as seen as the bottom left. On the right is the map, as you can tell just by how we're moving, we work on a grid system here. But the important thing to note is that there are still things you can beacon bomb in these stages. For instance, I just beacon bomb the water over there to send the Surbot in that direction to grab me an item. That could be one of a couple of things, and one of them, I believe, is the shell that we need as well for one of the serve bots. I already have one, but you can get a second one through this. As Tron also stated, wood crates you can pick up and you don't have any step limit on, whereas heavy metal crates you can't move at all when you pick them up, you can only rotate around and place them elsewhere. These are really fun puzzle stages. They start off really, really easy, but by the end game they can be rather intricate, and I really like them. You never need to get the crab uh, crates. They're just there for bonus money. But I want them. Because money. Notable though, like the minigame to raise a surf bot strength, you do these in multiple rounds at a time. Usually groups of three from my memory. So we're doing this first round, but then we're going to need to do two others all the same. You never change where you what map you're on when you do that. Uh, for instance, rounds two and three are going to be on the same map. You just start in different places and the crates are in different layouts. But they do get more complicated as you go on. Also, these really showcase just how stupid the AI for the serve bots is in movement. Instead of running right straight towards me like he could have, he did essentially an S-curve around the building. That's the last of the containers. You got them all. Congratulations. That's the last. All right, let's go to the next dock. Okay. The moment you get the last crate in, obviously the the mini game ends. Now, something you can do, but there's usually ways around it, especially here in the early game, is in the case your step count's getting low. You can just place a crate back down and pick it back up and reset your step count. But, especially here in an early game, they're smart enough about giving you pathways you can make yourself to make it so that even for the longer treks, you can make them in 10 steps. For instance, we can place these two metal crates down here to reduce the step count by two to get both of these crates to the ship within one set of 10 steps. And it's especially useful for this crab because uh, the crab is worth, I believe, 10k per crate. And so getting all three throughout these maps that we're doing right now, that's an extra 30,000, which no one should laugh at. That's really good money. 
Also, you can jump with the Gustav here, but that's not useful. At least right now. I, I forget if it actually does become useful later. It's been a while since I did the end game of this. I first played this game... Uh... When did it get released on PlayStation Network? 2015 or 16 or so? Around then. Because getting this game to work on emulator forever was a pain in the ass? To the point where I am using a very different emulator than what I tend to use for most of my other games. I am using BizHawk for this. I tend to use PSX Finn for my PlayStation stuff. But I need to use... BizHawk for this game in specific, because there's just something about this game that doesn't play nice with other emulators, and I can't tell what it is. And I know for a fact other people have that exact same problem, such as another Let's Player who does a lot of Mega Man stuff, just couldn't get this game to work for some reason. Tron Bon is a very odd game, though, in that since we have multiple gameplay styles, you can go about it however you wish. You can technically play this entire game as a puzzle game just doing these puzzle mini game or puzzle missions until you get the millions any you need. I'm not going to be doing that just because I want to show off all the gameplay styles as much as I can, but you can play this as just a puzzle game, just an action game, or even as an odd RPG. Uh, more on that whenever we get to part two. And I do appreciate that, but it means that in some ways the game feels like it lacks focus as even though the individual gameplay styles I feel are really well developed, there's always that bit of, huh? And that's the end of this mission set. That's the last of the containers, Miss Tron. We got them all. Yes, Miss John! I really like the puzzle stages. And I feel like you generally get a bit more money from doing the action stages if you play them optimally compared to the puzzle stages. But the puzzle stages are also shorter, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And there I got the comic from A2, that's going to be useful for a certain serve bot. And I also get a brain cube. There are three types of cubes, brain, attack, and speed, and they raise the respective stat of a serve bot you give it to by one. It is the only other way you can actually raise brains of a serve bot beyond bringing them on missions. And also notable, moving forward with the appraisal shop, I'm just going to be cutting out the selling and show you what I have left when I'm done selling. I want to make sure I save the shell because I can give it to number nine to realize some potential for him. For now, let's head to the lab, because I want to talk particularly to number two there in the back. Hello, Riker. Or was Riker number one? I actually forget. <sighs> what should I do? Uh, oh, Miss Tron, they told me I should help instead of just watching all the time. They gave me this paint set, but I'm not that good at drawing pictures. Of course, you were made for fighting. Here, why don't you give that to me? I'll make sure it gets used properly. Thank you, Miss Tron. And we get a paint set. Now, if I recall, wasn't there someone trying to be an artist over in the meeting room? Yes. Yes, there was. Let's just give that to number 35. Don't you think the two people next to me are pretty unique? There's lots of people like that on the ship. You just have to look for them. Thank you, number eight. Yay! Now I can draw and paint all I want. What should I start with? Oh, boy. Thanks. And now we get his special skill, painting. You're lucky, number 35. Not everyone gets to do, jo do the job they want. Thank you, Mistron. Hey, why don't I paint the Gustav for you? What do you want me to make it look like? And here you get a set of cosmetic color changes for the Gustav. Heroic look is a very odd combination of blue and cyan that I've never seen before. Hip-hop is pink and yellow. Villainous is dark red and black. Cute is very girly, cutesy pink. I'm sticking with the default paint scheme, though. I was tempted to go with the heroic set, though, because, yeah, the, it, it turns you into Mega Man's color scheme, which does feel good on the inside. Now let's head over to the gym and give number nine that comic book. Thank you, Miss Tron. I love comics. Wow, it's the latest issue of the Adventures of Sheriff Mega. Hmm, uh-huh. Isn't it interesting, number nine? I wouldn't get too close if I was you, miss. I'm just a drifter. Some say I'm a bounty hunter. But I like to think of myself as just a plain old gunman. 
Uh huh. People like you was never meant to be with someone like me, miss. It's the fate of people like me to live our lives alone, living and dying by the gun. Hello? What are you talking about? Stop that nonsense. Can't stop much as I'd like to, miss. Ain't got nothing else, just my horse and gun. And now he's a sniper. Number nine? Huh? Miss Tron? I'm sorry. I guess I got a little carried away by the story. So now you can bring number nine into you with you on missions as your attack stat. And he's not awful, from my memory at least. And this is Tron's room. We can't do much here for now. Gotta keep working hard for Miss Tron. That's the spirit. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What are you doing, number 40? This is called facial aerobics, Miss Tron. Facial aerobics? Yes, Miss Tron. You can keep your skin young and healthy by exercising your face. I read all about it in this book. I know that. What I want to know is why you're doing it. You don't have any skin. But Miss Tron, I just thought we should all look our best. You look good enough. You must be tired walking around so much, Miss Tron. Why don't you take a rest? No, without me watching, everyone will goof off. That'll come into play when we get a favorite serve bot later on. Oh god, what are those notes? This song is no good either. I just don't have what it takes to be a composer. Why do you say that, number 36? I didn't think it was that bad at all. But Miss Tron, all I'm doing is just making noise. I'm just hitting keys. I want to write music that will move people, and I just don't have what it takes. Without inspiration, I can't make music. I know what you mean. Building robots is kind of like that, too. If I just had something, something to stir my emotions, I think I could do it, but... Well, I don't know what I could do to help you, but I'll think of something, okay? Uh, thank you, Miss Tron. Now, you're just supposed to give him the shell, just straight up. I can hear the ocean. No, more than that, I can see it. The blue sky, the white sand, the waves. This... This is music too! Yes! This is what this music is supposed to be! Miss Tron, I know what to do now! I- I can make music too! And he gets his special skill music. We'll do more with that later. But if you find certain items that he can write songs about, he'll write them. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much for 250 subscribers. I know I'm late in making this video, but getting this set up took some time and I wanted to make sure it looked right. And in part two, whenever it happens, We'll be heading on into the very unique RPG style. And I'm very excited to do that because I'm very excited to do this game. I love the Legends games as it is, but Tronmon is such a unique adventure that I'm just very glad to share it with you all. And I'll see you guys in part two whenever that happens. See you guys then.